Tonight on The Local Live, Shelley Mayer announces a major funding boost for the Community Resource Center. An electric car charger is installed at the Mamaroneck Town Center. Walk to School Week is coming up. And on tonight's roundtable, Rhineck and the Maranek High School students describe their efforts to combat climate change and improve the environment. LMC TV studios on Boston Post Road. It's Thursday, October 3rd. I'm Mike Witch. Welcome to The Local Live. State Senator Shelley Mayer announced a $20,000 grant to the Community Resource Center to assist with immigrant legal services. A press conference was held at the CRC earlier today. So today, uh, with the really with the help of the Senate Majority Leader, Andrea Stewart-Cousins, the New York State Senate is able to give $20,000 for targeted immigration assistance programs to bring lawyers into communities. With this modest grant, coupled with a donation from supporters of the Community Resource Center, and I want to thank them, the Community Resource Center is going to be able to hire a full-time attorney to bolster the services they provide now without an attorney, but they're going to have an attorney here full-time to help people go to hearings, go to interviews, provide advice, and provide legal guidance in a very tough environment uh, in the immigration world. The truth is we know that anybody fares better with legal representation, and that's especially true for immigrants at this time. This is our community. These are our neighbors. We are all together going to make sure that this happens well and that people are served. Town of Bamaranek Supervisor Nancy Seligson welcomes an environmentally friendly addition to the town center. Please meet your electric vehicle charging station. The town applied for four grants from the state of New York to get funding for four electric vehicle charging stations in the town, and three of them are up and running. Right now, the electric vehicle charging stations are free because we are doing a introductory offer in the town for people to use them but we will be applying charges to them in the near future. We're happy to offer electric vehicle charging stations so that to encourage people to buy and use electric vehicles because it's going to help our environment and it's going to help our community. Next week is National Walk to School Week. Here is why you should consider joining this nationwide activity. To find out when your local school is participating, you can go to your school or to the Mamaroneck School District's website. After this brief message, I'll be sitting down with local Rhineck and Mamaroneck High School students to talk about their environmental initiatives. They'll take your questions on the air. Stay tuned. Uh, welcome. In our live community roundtable tonight, we are discussing climate change, and I'm joined by four students from Rhineck and Mamaroneck High School, and each of them has something interesting going on, and I'd like them to introduce themselves. So first, Jen. Hi, um, I'm Jen Novick. I'm from Mamaroneck High School. I'm a sophomore, and I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited to talk about the climate. <laughs> hmm. And a club that you are Yes, forming. I've just recently started a club. It's called Eco Reps, and mm -hmm. We're really excited to kind of 
get the show on the road <laughs> and get started. And Alessandra, you're also a co-president? Yes, um, I'm Alessandra Hintz. I'm also a sophomore at the Maranek High School. Uh, I play soccer there. And uh, Jen and I, along with our friend Jenna, who's watching behind the scenes, um, mm -hmm. decided to start a club, Eco Reps, to try and just kind of get the ball uh, rolling at the high school uh, cool. for like recycling, things like that. Okay. Jonathan. Uh, yes, my name is Jonathan Marquis. I'm a senior at Rynack High School. And uh, Owen and I are both part of the science research program. And so we've done a lot of work testing the water quality in the swamp that surrounds our school and had a few efforts to kind of mitigate what we found. Good, I want to hear something about that. Sure. Yeah. And Owen, besides wearing the same shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my name is Owen Robertson. I'm a senior at Rynek High School and I'm a member of multiple environmental clubs at the school. I'm also a member of Action Research um, and along with the work that I've done with Jonathan in science research. Okay, thank you all for coming and for having this little discussion. And I want to remind our audience watching that uh, this is a live segment. So if you've got a comment to make to these young people or you've got a question for them, feel free to call us or you can send an email. Uh, and you're, if you're watching on Facebook, you can communicate with them that way. And we will endeavor to ask the question and have them answer. So normally, I've, well, nor normally, but I've seen a lot of programs where adults are talking about climate change and do you believe it, do you not, who do you trust? Uh, they get into the politics of it. So we wanted to have a little something different. And uh, that's why we invited high school students. And last week when there was a big strike in New York, we were curious about what was going on in the Maranek and, and in Rynek. And when I called Rynek, they said, well, there's nothing. Students are not demonstrating. And that's true? Well, we didn't do anything with our school. Mm -hmm. But I did not go to school that day. And I went to the protest. So, Is this going to get you in trouble now? Because we can't um, edit this out. <laughs> I don't think it'll get me in trouble. Okay, but <laughs> we'll, we'll get you some extra points. It's for anyway. the greater yeah. good. Yeah. So you did go down to the city. Yeah, I did, and um, got there by train. And we show up, and they're just high school students all over the place, all young people, and mm -hmm. some tiny children accompanied with their parents. Mm -hmm. And the little children were actually the most excited. Really? I swear, they were holding their posters and they were uh -huh. screaming at the top of their lungs. Uh -huh. And you know, their parents were walking with them. But it really was a youth protest and very fun to be a part of too. Did you get to see Greta? I had to leave early. Oh. I saw her for maybe 10 seconds before I, before I had to run to get on the subway. But um, uh -huh. yeah. And did you stay at school? Owen? I did stay at school. I'm unfortunately committed to the school's soccer team. Mm -hmm. And so although I really would have liked to have gone, I have commitments that I can't just leave. But were you there in spirit? I was there in spirit. Okay. Um, Jonathan and my other friends that went were texting me about it, so I got to live the experience through them. So you did have some friends besides Jonathan who went? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're finding out more and more <laughs> about the situation. Uh, Alessandra, you went? Uh, no, I didn't get to go. Okay. Uh, like Owen, I had um, I had soccer, and they don't let you leave. If you leave school, you can't uh, play in the game. So mm -hmm. I couldn't go, but I also had um, some friends who went and went and showed their support. I would have loved to be there, but I couldn't go. And what did they tell you about the event? Were they as excited as uh, Jonathan reports? Yeah, I mean, it, the thing was, I mean, it was a huge um, showing of just kind of the support, and it, show, it goes to show how much um, young people are, are behind this movement, and I think that's a, one of the reasons our club is going to do so well in the high school, because it's really a matter that um, is going to impact our life, is impacting our lives, so people are really excited to try and um, try and help out as, as best they can. Well, you might remember when you arrived tonight, and I greeted you, and I said, is it all because of Greta that you're doing this? And you kind of laughed and you said, no, no, no. Why are you doing this? Yeah, um, I think that it's totally an important topic, like Sandra said, that it's really going to be affecting our lives more than kind of the older generations because we're really going to be living through it. And I think it's important to be an upstander and really take action as best you can. It's really kind of easy to sweep the problems under the rug and mm. not find it relevant, but I think if everyone kind of makes the effort to change their habits and do it, everything as best they can, then that's kind of what's really going to come all together and make the, the most difference that we can make for the climate. I'm feeling guilty right now because it was my generation at Woodstock and all the rest, and we said, you know, we're going to fix the world. And 
I don't think we quite fixed it. Mm. I think we messed it up a little. <laughs> Do you hold us responsible? Are you? Um, are you, are you I don't think kind I of hold. Mad? No, I mean, no. Yeah. Greta was furious with us <laughs> at the UN. Yeah, I mean, I totally think it's understandable to have a lot of kind of pent up aggression about the topic. It's mm -hmm. a really um, emotional one, but I, I don't hold it against your generation. I think it's kind of, we're all part of the problem and we all have to come together to fix it. Mm -hmm. yeah, at the beginning of our show uh, tonight, we had a video clip and uh, we saw you there, Owen. Uh, you were there, you were speaking to the Village of Mamaroneck board and it wasn't about, it wasn't about this per se, it, because it was a report about uh, some research that you did. Do you, can you just describe it a little bit and then we're gonna see that clip. Yeah, just a little bit of background. Uh, what we did, it's for the, uh, I was in the Action Research for Community Change group. And so what we did is we constructed and distributed a survey locally about the generational differences uh, in climate change perception. Mm -hmm. So essentially, that means how do people of different ages see climate change and see, um, and what do they think that they have to do to it? And how does age play into that? And the, you, you did some, re you looked up some research that was done basically 10 years ago, and then you did, you compared it to current research. Yeah. And you found out some very interesting differences. Yeah. Well, we can get into that, but, so let's take a look at, uh, at the clip. This is from May 13th, I believe, yes. That sounds right. And it's at a Village of the Maronick board meeting, and you were one of four, I think, students uh, along with Dr. Valerie Fight, who uh, runs the Action Research Program? Correct. Okay, let's take a look at that and we'll be right back. The survey data from the original study collected between December 24, 2009 and January 3, 2010 from Yale University and other universities offered no predictable portrait of young people when it came to global warming. While less concerned about and preoccupied with global warming than older generations, they were slightly more likely to believe that global warming was caused by human factors and that there was a scientific consensus that it was occurring. And while climate change can seem like a daunting task, it's important to conquer it in a lot of little steps to, so that we accomplish the goal. So what were some of the big changes that you found after 10 years of climate change and people seeing what's going on today? Well, what we saw is that the younger generation is really rising up to the challenge and they're really showing how they are informed about climate change mm -hmm. and how, well, not necessarily informed, but they're using what they know to draw a conclusion that we really have to do something. Do they know more than they did 10 years ago? Um, I would think like with social media and just the proliferation of the internet and films and things like that, that you've, there's gotta be more information out there. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I feel like both people, well, sorry, the people now mm -hmm. do know a lot more about climate change, but what we found is that the groups 10 years ago and the groups today, both uh, for the majority felt that they needed more information on climate change, hmm. um, which we found really interesting because today, the day and age, we have social media, we have the internet, which makes it really easy to find information on climate change. And what we thought is that if these people really want to know more information about climate change, what is the best way to get it to them? Is it in schools? Is mm -hmm. it to show it to them online? And so that's one of the, um, that's one of the things that we concluded. What about the believability? Who, do you believe everything you see on the internet? That's what's interesting yeah. because all there is, while there is so much good information on the internet, there's some things and there's some co uh, contradict, uh, contradicting statistics that really make you think, is what I'm reading on here believable? Mm -hmm. And so I think that plays into the um, conclusion that people feel that they need more information. Well, one of the things that uh, I remember hearing, because I heard that whole uh, clip more than we just saw, and I believe, uh, in 2009, roughly half the people were worried about climate change, and that bumped all the way up to 90% mm -hmm. uh, in 2019. So clearly, I guess the, the crazy weather we're having, the rising seas, the, the, all the media reports, the storms, the hurricanes, et cetera, uh, it's gotten to worry people. Mm -hmm. Is that a reason, I mean, is that something that your club wants to get involved in? Is, 
Who do you believe? Where do you, what information do you get and from where? Um, well, for our club, I think the focus is really to um, try and be as uh, responsible kind of in the, the area, the realm of like recycling, composting, and, and keeping the community clean. But of course, you know, if we're looking out for statistics, maybe mm -hmm. trying to um, show the importance of the club. Obviously, it's, uh, it's really important to, to get the best sources and make sure that what you have is the right information. But it is hard. Um, with the internet, everything's floating around. It's hard to know, like, hard to tell fact from fiction. So, Do you, you, you have support from a teacher? Yes. Um, shout out to Ms. Rinaldi for watching Hello. this. Rinaldi. Our supervisor, she's been great. Mm -hmm. She's very involved herself and very enthusiastic about recycling. So that's kind of been a, a big support system for us. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Knowing and you believe everything she says to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Well, uh, I don't, she's not really involved in, in so much of the like statistics and stuff like that, but she's uh -huh. there helping us you know, make connections like this one. Um, and stuff like that, but we're, uh, the students are really encouraged to, to lead the, the programs and mm -hmm. the clubs, so, uh, yeah. I should ask, in fact, I did ask before we went on the air, if there's a similar club at Rhineck, and you said there are a few? I think you said the Sequoia Club is one of them? Yeah, so the Sequoia Club is the main club that is involved on campus at Rhineck, or mm -hmm. at, in the school, and so what we did last year, just like you guys, we actually, petitioned for the school to adopt a more rigorous recycling plan because right now it's very hard for the school to recycle because a lot of the trash that we're throwing out isn't sorted and so what we did is we did a little study about what would make uh, what would be the most effective for recycling in classrooms right and so based on what we found we ordered new recycling bins um, that are sorted and have different slots for each type of recycling. Mm. And so we hope to implement that soon. Is it th three yes. kinds of recycling, like well, you do as a homeowner in Rhineck? Yeah. Which I happen to be, so I, I know I have to do glass and plastic and in one, and metal, and then paper in another, and regular trash in the third. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's essentially what it is. Interesting. Is similarly in the Marinick, is there recycling that goes on? Is there sorting that goes on you're aware of? Yeah, so we just actually learned about this very recently. Oh. Um, our school at Marinick, we do what's called the single stream recycling, which is so you don't have to sort the paper and the plastic and the metal and the glass. That actually all goes into the same bin, and then it's sorted when it is brought to the recycling site. Oh. So we actually just applied for a very similar, we call it student grants at Marinick, um, to get um, what we hoped would be a more rigorous recycling mm -hmm. program um, because we also had intended on sorting the paper and the plastic mm -hmm. um, kind of to find out later on the yeah. line that that's not necessary at our high school. So yeah. we, do, we do have um, a sorting process in the, like in the hallways, there's really big, there's big um, Recycling, recycling like uh, cans with lids that are for, for paper and for your bottles. Um, okay. We feel also it's important just to keep people really more aware of like what goes in we each because like what goes in which because we found that at the school you know like one one rotten apple like ruins the batch. We have like people if you put a piece of trash in the recycling bin then um, it's hard for them to sort it and then mm. a lot of times we're finding that that recycling that bin of recycling is just thrown out so. That's really not, you know, we're trying to... You, you have to follow that. the stream from when somebody puts it in a recycling bin and then does it actually get mixed together, commingled, yeah. or does it, is it kept separate mm -hmm. and then where does it go from there? Yeah. So you need to ride along with the, yeah. mm, yeah. with the custodians and then follow it to the trash pickup. And yeah, it's important to, to know the process so we can figure out kind of yeah. what's lacking there and what we can improve on. What kind of reaction are you getting from the students at the high school? Are they all, yes, we want this club? Yeah, um, all of our, Good. I mean, maybe they're biased, they're my friends, but all of them have been pretty <laughs> so far, excited. So far, yes, but you're um, going to reach out yeah, beyond your social yeah, circle. Yeah. I do think that because they're, you know, Greta is getting so much publicity, I do think that it's pretty on the front of people's minds. So mm. I feel like at our club fair, when everyone signs up, which is next mm -hmm. week, I do think there will be a pretty good turnout. Of you could have hundreds. People. Yes. Let's hope maybe so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there big support at Rhineck for similar efforts to recycle and reduce your footprint, so to speak? Uh, well, 
Yes and no. Well, it's not very public yet. Mm -hmm. But um, we, what we have seen is that the sorted recycling bins that are in some classrooms right now, they're, they're working. And so I feel like whether or not it's really a very public change, mm -hmm. I feel like it's going to create a difference nonetheless. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Jonathan, about yeah. your particular research. You did some research. You told us about nitrogen and phosphorus pollution in the water. This is the natural water around the campus? Yes. So Not this, the drinking fountains? No, no. natural water. So okay. surrounding our school is a swamp. And um, Owen and I have been working on our science research project there. And last year, we'd go out there pretty much every other day and take water samples, mm -hmm. testing for phosphorus, nitrogen, and dissolved oxygen. So what we found, we found very high levels of phosphates, which essentially means something was running off into the water from, yeah. it could be fertilizer, it could be oil from paved lots, something like that. And then we found low levels of nitrogen which was due to, uh, we think, something with there being too many leaves mm. in the water and essentially just, it's, an, it's a nutrient and it's something necessary for life in the swamp. And in addition to that, we found very low levels of uh, dissolved oxygen, which is very necessary for any plant life or fish. And um, so with that research, we've kind of tried to do little projects and move forward, mm -hmm. um, but that's what we kind of targeted as an issue. Uh, and you did, school. you took some small steps. You planted some yeah. native grasses or something? So yeah, we planted um, on the side, uh, well, a bank that mm -hmm. was on the border of um, the parking lot and the swamp, and we put what's called panicum virgatum, or switchgrass, and that's essentially just a really robust uh, natural grass that filters mm -hmm. out phosphorus in particular mm -hmm. um, and essentially it what's so good about it is as soon as it takes root nothing will kill it and it stays <laughs> there um, for a while and can continue to filter out rainwater or mm -hmm. keep the bank from eroding um, does that have practical applications for let's say homeowners in the area well in terms of drinking water I don't think no. it would do anything but for the natural habitats that surround um, homeowners, I think the the plant itself it is ugly, which is why I think <laughs> not many homeowners would want it there. Mm -hmm. But its practical uses are very good for kind of maintaining the beauty and the functionality of their ecosystems. So, I wanted to uh, show the audience uh, a little bit of Greta Thunberg. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did I say her name right? Yes. Um, who spoke at the United Nations Summit uh, Conference. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we all agree that her speech was rather accusatory mm -hmm. uh, and uh, emotional. Um, and I, I know I was affected by it, and I want to ask you what you thought about it. Let's take a look at uh, Greta Thunberg, a little bit of her speech at the UN Climate Summit. We'll be back. You all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words, and yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering, people are dying, entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Well, I think we can agree that everybody deserves clean air to breathe and clean water to drink and a safe environment in which to live. But what, what, what's the argument with that? Why is this such a, 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 a heated argument among some people? Um, well, I think it's, it's... You must talk to your parents at home, right, about this kind of thing? Yes, okay. it's, it's definitely, um, as Jen said before, it's, it's definitely on the front of everybody's mind. Um, just because here um, in the town of Merrick and, and Rhineck, it may not be very pressing or may not seem very pressing, um, Greta definitely brings up points that in some places it's already taking effect and it's really affecting people's lives. So it's important to, to look at all the impacts and to realize that we have to act fast and that you know, there's not really time. You might time. talk about some of these island nations which are yeah. 
just inches above sea level that right now. and the, the catastrophic storms that are hitting them all this mm -hmm. all these things are coming together and it's just it's time to act mm -hmm. uh, are you equally um, inspired by her yeah I'm sure her thoughts are very empowering um, we have some friends who get pretty emotional <laughs> just as she does when they talk about the climate change and I do think like Sandra brings up it might not seem like the most pressing of issues in our day-to-day -day lives, but even if you just look at like the weather from yesterday to today, it was like 90 degrees yesterday, today it's almost close to 50 degrees, so mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy the, the ways in which the climate is kind of... You know, she's, she's attracted a lot of lightning hits, especially from the far right, from some conservative people who, who have accused her of being a disturbed teenager. Frankly, I saw in one case, are you bothered by any of this online criticism or do you just not let it affect you? Seriously bothered. Yeah. I think it's really disappointing to see our president tweet, um, you know, seems like sarcastically, seems like a very happy uh, girl looking mm -hmm. forward to a wonderful future when she's kind of condemning his actions and the actions of large corporations uh, who ignore all of their environmental destruction and I I just think to call her who's kind of representing what the youth believe in uh, to call her like disabled spoiled it it's an insult to all of youth groups like us who are supporting her and backing her on this effort because it is our future and so yeah it is disappointing I want to ask you if you've um, discovered resources other than each other and some of your teachers and your, I'm sure your parents are supportive, I would imagine. Yes, <laughs> yes? okay. Um, do you pay particular attention to podcasts or are you tuned into certain personalities that, besides Greta uh, who, who have this at the top of their agenda? I personally am. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it like a resource is not feeding me many statistics, but I'm pretty involved in um, the sustainable fashion industry as a whole. Um, I know that the fast fashion industry is one of the most wasteful industries there is, mm -hmm. and so I do kind of keep up with a lot of brands who prioritize making sustainable and ethical pieces of clothing, as well as like thrifting is really important. Mm -hmm. something our friends and I like to do a lot. So that's kind of one way that I stay involved, minus a lot of the politics. <laughs> Thrifting means what? Buying clothes that are vintage. Oh, so okay. anything that's secondhand that you didn't buy that's like a trendy item mm. is helping. Yeah, so Sandra's wearing <laughs> a sweater <laughs> right now. <laughs> that, um, mm. That's helping the industry by not buying into an industry that makes their clothes irresponsibly. with yeah irresponsibly yeah. is a good word without ethical wages mm -hmm. and not prioritizing the environment jonathan you mentioned a few minutes ago about industry big industry yes are they the stumbling block to dealing with climate change effectively well it's a lot of things because if you want to look at statistics that scientists put out there, they say about more than two-thirds of carbon emissions are coming from 100 uh, corporations. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I think it's important to look at what these corporations are doing and say um, you have to do something to kind of lower this carbon output, um, become more sustainable. But also, I think it's a major factor is just our consumer culture. You know, we buy something, we throw it out. Um, you know, 90, I think I read something like 99% of what we purchase in, let's say, a month is thrown out within the next six months. And I, I think it's just the way our society, especially in America, is built that we kind of overuse materials. And although these corporations have uh, contributed a lot to it, they're just mm -hmm. kind of uh, like, Fitting a demand, essentially. So are you prepared as you move on in life to confront some of these corporations or are you just going to make, uh, take little steps of your own 
I, I think we're going to have no choice but to confront mm -hmm. these corporations. I think uh, everyone who's a citizen, or not everyone, just everyone in general, sure. has to come together, politicians, uh, individuals, corporations, and we have to realize that more has to be done um, as, you know, just two-thirds coming from these corporations. If you limit those, other corporations will grow. So essentially, there just has to be a total shift to renewable resources and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I saw an Associated Press story in the Journal News on September 29th, and the headline was, Energy Saving Habits Vary in Popularity. Like, your people are, are willing to turn the lights off when they're not in use or lower the thermostat a few degrees. Uh, but are they ever going to go full-time vegetarian? And the answer was probably not, because those are the habits that are the hardest to change. Yes. You know, but talking about making those little steps that will reduce your carbon footprint uh, on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we might not have enough time to take yeah. those little steps. You know, um, some scientists are saying we have 12 years before we reach a point where there's going to be damage that we can't really come back from. And so I think it's very important for individuals to take these little steps, but I also think there has to be some motivation to do mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And I think that's where the government could step in and say, all right, we're going to put a tax on carbon. So you want to buy meat and have a very, like have a burger for dinner or something mm -hmm. that's going to cost a lot more than having a veggie burger. Or drive a Hummer. Yeah, drive a Hummer, you know, mm -hmm. gas prices getting taxed and going up. Yeah. I think that's the only way that we could quickly change habits and essentially our culture um, to kind of lower our carbon footprints. Yeah. Well, well spoken, um, all of you. I mean, you're sophomores, so you're not eligible to vote. <laughs> Are you registered? Not registered yet. Okay. Turn 18 in about three months. Okay. Well, so you were talking about government doing something. That yes. means uh, your elected representatives have to be ready, willing, and able to, to put that philosophy on the line. So exactly. you've got to elect those people. So voting people who are 18 or getting ready to be mm -hmm. 18. Calling you soon enough. Your yeah. local yeah. representative also trying to just make sure that you're advocating for what you believe in, if, and even if you're not of age to vote, it's really important to try and take these steps. Well, I must say I am very impressed, and I think our audience is too, which is why they didn't call in for questions, because you spoke so <laughs> Answered <them> eloquently. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for being with us, and yeah. uh, just want to tell our audience there's more of the show uh, coming up, and next uh, week we're going to be talking about... Uh, gay uh, children uh, and parents and how they react to it. And uh, before we talk about that, I want to tell you to stay tuned for the Varsity Sports Play of the Week. We'll be right back. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do you stars visit their friends? Look! This week in sports, the Mamaroneck volleyball team hosted crosstown rival Rhineck in its homecoming match. The Tigers and Panthers battled into a decisive fifth set. The Tigers had their backs against the wall with the Panthers a point away from taking the win. Then the Tigers rattled off four straight points, stunning the Panthers. Take a look at the action in LMC TV's Varsity Sports Play of the Week. Played over by Mamaroneck. 
Marino plays it off, and it is tapped. Oh! Throwing his volleyball. Great serve by Chun. Hunt into the net. Match point number two for the Marinette. Chun for the match. Serves it, keeping it alive. Wes, good play. And it goes into the net, and the Tigers win. 26 24 in dramatic fashion. Three sets to two. One set number two, three, and five. What a match. If you missed any of tonight's live broadcast, you can catch the replays of the local live twice a day on this channel, as well as on the LMC TV website. And you can find story clips on our YouTube channel. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook to stay up to date on things you may have missed. Tune in next Thursday when we'll talk with parents about the experience of their children coming out as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. The day after that show is National Coming Out Day. Thank you for watching The Local Live. I'm Mike Witch.